In a previous video before Endeavor One, we discussed the ability to personalize your ISO based on your needs using a special command. And in this video, we will talk about this command and how it is to install your own applications and make your own ISO using Devo One. So first, if you notice, Devo One is XFCE. Let's say I want to remove XFCE. So basically, remove XFCE. This is how we remove XFCE. Not the best way, but this is how we remove it. It is 40.8 megabytes. So if you want to create your own ISO, removing 40.8 megabytes doesn't look much. So it's better not to remove it. And if you want to install an other operating system, you install it uh, next to it. Unless there is some conflict, so you have to remove all the XFCE from your system. So first, if you notice, we will use we will see which programs we want to install or which problems uh, programs we want to remove. Let's say you want to remove LibreOffice. It is you you don't need it and you want to remove it. So it's very easy. You go to the terminal and you remove all the LibreOffices that are available. Let's say I want to add another program. The same thing. You add another program. You make your settings. In in this uh, example, what we will do is. I will install another desktop environment, sudo apt install, a lightweight environment, it's LXDE. So let us install it. So you click yes. LXDE is installed, so we need to log out to check the LXDE so we press dev1 we put the password and you press here F1 open box LXDE XFCE open box LXDE when we press it So this is the LXDE desktop environment. As you can see, this is the uh, the panel and these are the, the menu. And if you see here in the system tools, it installed PCMan FM, which is the default for LXDE. We have the LX terminal, also the one the default. So we have plenty of terminals now. We have the LX term and we have the XFCE terminal. We have two task managers, there's no problem. And uh, for the for the others for the sound, let's say we have MPV and LX Music for LXDE and SM Player also installed it. So not, uh, now let us check the refractor snapshot. But before we need to update our system, so first you need to say sudo apt update you put the password i already updated so there is no problem and next you'll also have to upgrade and of course it already has upgraded so we finish this step the next step is i want to do the snapshot so when you open the refractor snapshot menu, you have all of these. The most important one is number one and also number five. Let us start with number five to understand how to set up snapshot if you want to have more control over your snapshot. So let's start with number five. Number one and two, you can change. Number three, it will restore number two to its default so we'll go with one and two let us go with number one fail to open the document close it opened it there's no problem 
and he tells us warning you are using the root account you may harm your system of course because it is in the etc and it opened it if you notice they have some configuration they give you there is no limit for the cpu and what it tells me is the snapshot directory it will be in slash home slash snapshot so if your hard disk does not have space you can change the snapshot to another location you can put the location that you want the work directory is slash home slash work which means that this this work directory slash home slash work is it takes all the files and put them in this directory and after it uh, picks put them in this directory it will create the iso from this directory and then remove everything inside the work directory so also this file it is a big file it will be a big file so if you have another space on another hard drive you can do it you can put it on on, on another hard drive efi work there is no problem it is a small file here make EFI yes you you can you can put it and that's basically for uh, for Debian this is this is not changed because it's the default that is available so you don't change it and that's all it is for this one for the second one. For the second one is very important. Close. Why? Because it gives all the files that are excluded from the snapshot. Of course, let's say if you have all in the boot, in the FS tab, in the slash home snapshot, because sometimes you have maybe you made five six snapshots you put them in the iso files you don't want this iso files to be in inside another iso because it is big so they included it they included all the logs if you notice varlib logs all the trash are excluded the cache mozilla cache and thumbnails and the most important is these three the virtual box and the virtual box vms are excluded because you know these are very big files and you don't want to have very big files inside your iso because your iso should be like two jigs or three jigs or the, something like that the other thing is wine wine they included it and they put a comment on it so wine is included if you believe your files uh, if you believe your iso is very big you exclude the wine so you remove this one but if you installed wine and you have only one or two programs that are small enough so this one is is okay so you have to check this one if your wine directory is very big you have to exclude the wine in order for your iso to be as small as possible the other things that you might also exclude here let's say you know my username is dev1 so here if i have a big f files in the downloads folder on my system i want to exclude them so i put slash home slash dev1 slash downloads and i will uncomment this one the same with the music the same with the pictures and the same with the videos so basically these these important factors are are essential to run your snapshot and don't have any problems these four if you have some problems two three four five two three four if you have some problems with the squashing of the files you can press them but for basic use most of the time two three four are not used only the five is used and the one so let us start with uh, creating the snapshot
it is checking for free space. You have to make sure you have free space before doing the snapshot, unless you want to save the snapshot on another drive. So this is very important. The default one is in slash home slash snapshot. So if you want to change the settings, you can go to this file here, etc slash refractasnapshot.conf and change some of the settings, but the defaults are okay. So you don't need to change it. So, and he gives me that I have 16 gigabytes. I'm using five gigabytes now and the available is 9.4. So we don't have a problem. And so we say, okay. The username is devo1 and it is straightforward from here. I have cut the time of the copying and now it is creating the ISO. So when it finished the copying, it finished copying, it is creating the ISO. It will take some time. So refractor snapshot has finished. We click OK. We come back here. We go to PC Man FM. We go up. Snapshot. And as you can see, we have the ISO file. And for the verification, ISO chart 256. So this ISO file is the file which includes LXDE and XFCE, both. If you want KDE, you can do your own uh, ISO. You are free to do whatever you want. So Refract a Snapshot is a good way in order for you to customize your Linux distribution, install your favorite distri the desktop environment, and enjoy the beauty which dev one gave you as a free tool to personalize your distribution. I hope you like this uh, video and if you like to have a content same as this one, just click the like button and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.